Good evening. Welcome to my Sacred Spaces vlog, I guess. I just want to do one of these again. I have been thinking about something for a while. Um, I kind of just let it stay in the back of my head, mull over it, and then when I feel like I have something to say, I put a little video together. Um, hope you've had a good day. Hope this finds you well. I did a 21k run this morning with my running club, which is really awesome. But I feel like a good sort of broken afterwards. But anyway, I got a glass of water, which kind of leads me into what I want to talk about. There's a passage in Ezekiel 47, which is the river from the temple. And I'll read a bit of it. It's called, in, in the NLT, it's called the River of Healing. In the NIV, it's called the River from the Temple. Anyway, there's this river that's flowing out of the temple. So I'm not going to read the entire passage. But as this river flows, um, there I could see a stream flowing out the south side of the east gateway. Measuring as he went, he led me along the stream for 1,750 feet. I don't know what that is, meters. You have to wait here to divide by three, whatever. Told me to go across, and at that point, the water was up to my ankles. Then he measured off another 1,750 feet and told me to go across again. This time the water was up to my knees. And then again another 1,750 feet and it was up to my waist. And then he measured another 1,750 feet and the river was too, too deep to cross without swimming. You had to swim across. Basically it's four little depths. So ankle deep, uh, knee deep and waist deep and then too deep you have to kind of swim. And then he said, at that point where the swimming part was, he said, he told me to keep in mind what I had seen. Then he led me back to the riverbank. So suddenly, to my surprise, many trees, I'm looking around, many trees were now growing on both sides of the river. And then he goes on, there's about four or five verses, but he explains like all this life that's happening on the riverbank. Flowers, trees, plants, all of this is happening at that depth. Where, where the river's so deep that you have to swim across. And it got me thinking about just our faith and um, our approach to God. And it probably applies to everything. You know, if I work at a climbing center, um, if you just dabble in climbing, do a little bit, ankle deep, it will only be an ankle deep kind of sport for me where I only know a little bit because I'm only going in ankle deep. But if I start going in knee deep, waist deep, or if I dive fully into the sport, then it will become a lot more. But I wanted to talk about that when it comes to faith. And yeah, faith with God. Everyone can experience God. Everyone has this relationship with God. People who um, are believers, who are Christians, who have faith in God. But I think there's varied degrees of how much faith and relationship we have with God. Some people will speak of the sense of God of their lives, they'll experience miracles, they'll see God at work, they'll do some incredible things, and other people say, I don't really feel God. And I think it re relates to this little passage from Ezekiel 47 about the how deep we go with God. And that's essentially what I wanted to say uh, this evening is, how deep do you and I want to go with God? Do you want to stay in the shallow water, ankle deep, or do you want to go waist deep, or even better, diving in? and go fully in submerged um, and just experience this fullness of God. Uh, John 10 verse 10, Jesus' invitation, he says, I've come that they may have life and life to the full. That always, um, I'm always reminded about that. But yeah, how deep are we willing to go? Um, yeah, at Oakwood, we have a lot of residential groups that come on the weekend. Mainly church groups, probably 90% of the groups that come on the weekend are church groups. We have all sorts of faith faith groups. I mean, all sorts of church groups. So you'll have um, African groups, you have Indian groups, you have Brazilians, you have um, Church of England, you have Pentecostal, Charismatic, but you have all sorts of things happening in the Octagon. Uh, what I love about um, Oakwood, a lot of people have said you can feel... The spirit of this place, the spirit of God doing something, which I totally love. Like I totally get it because living on site and I experience it and seeing it. And just, I just kind of think in that round building the octagon where people have their talks and faith and worship, so many people have met with God. Some people express their love for God, like commit, recommitted themselves to God or met God for the first time. And 
there's just this like sense that in that building there's a lot of good going there. God's doing something. God's doing something. But I remember a group a while back was saying, um, an African group, African Christians were were there and they said they could sense like angels over the place. Now for some people, that would be way, way out. That's bizarre. They, they don't want that. They don't want, but the reason why they don't want that or don't get it or don't understand it is because they're ankle deep, maybe knee deep. But I think some faiths, some people, when you want like dive fully in, and when you're fully in, you can experience a spiritual realm on a bigger, bigger thing, a bigger emphasis or whatever. Um, I definitely agree with that. And I think I, I waver a lot because sometimes I want to be, say, I don't know, I think I'll waver to be knee deep and waist deep and never always fully submerged. But I believe you'll feel the prompting of God's Spirit more the deeper we go. And maybe that's just a question to leave with you this week is, how are you going to go deeper? Um, I often think of um, Western Christianity. And I'm obviously stereo- stereo- stereotyping here and I'm putting things in a box and it's not all that all like that. But a lot of Western Christianity can be very ankle, knee deep. And that's kind of okay with that. Then you get a lot of, I would say, Eastern Christianity, Christianity from other places where actually so connected and so deep and just experiencing God in such real ways. And I always kind of thought about that, you know. We've always had the funds from the West, you know, um, to go and plant churches, to go be missionaries elsewhere. But imagine there's a turn of the tables where, where like you actually get people from churches in China or churches in India say, we need to go to England. We need to convert people there. We need to go to America. We need to convert people to Jesus there. That was just so radical. It was so awesome. People came from Africa saying, we're going to the West. So the West need help. The West need to know Jesus. The West are only ankle deep. They need to be waist deep. They need to be submerged, swimming in this river of God. I kind of just love that. Um, so we've just got to experience Jesus, you know, like... What, at what depth we experience Jesus. And then he's got a verse, I'm going to find it here, I've got it on the screen. Um, John 7, verses 30, 30, John 7, 37 to 38, where he says, On the last stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture said, rivers of living water will flow from, from within them. I like it. Rivers of living water will flow from them. That's pretty powerful. How deep do you want to go? How much water, spiritual water, like this, how deep do you want to go? That's the question. Do you want to stay shallow or do you want to go deeper? And I think if we go deeper, we would experience God in more profound ways, without a doubt. Hands down, definitely think so. Thank you for listening to my musings. Enjoy your week.